the most common car engine configuration is the inline four cylinder engine and it makes sense because inline fours are compact light and in general has fewer moving parts which makes them more reliable less complex and lowers the cost of manufacturing that all sounds perfect for aviation use so why are purpose designed inline four cylinder engines for light aircraft almost completely non-existent the answer might surprise you what's up everyone i'm a private pilot and aviation enthusiast and this is let's go aviate before we get into the aviation specific problems of the inline four we first need to understand why the widely in use horizontally opposed four also called the boxer four is so popular and works so well on light aircraft the Boxer 4's layout, even though it is not very compact and is very wide, actually works really well on airplanes. Its low horizontal height above the crankshaft means it can be mounted right on the desired thrust line without hindering forward visibility for the pilot. It's got only two cylinders in a line, so it can be easily air-cooled, which keeps these engines fairly simple and doesn't require the added weight and complexity of water cooling systems. The flat four-cylinder layout also results in an extremely smooth running engine. Even so, it is still more complex, heavy and large compared to a similar sized inline 4. One example of this is the flat force engine block which needs to be cast into two separate halves compared to the inline force engine block which can be cast as a single piece which makes it lighter and more rigid. But despite the inline force superior qualities which I've mentioned, it unfortunately has some drawbacks for use in aviation which cannot easily be overcome. The first and most obvious drawback is its orientation. Even though it is the most compact four-cylinder engine configuration, if you were to remove a flat four from an airplane and drop in an inline four, one problem immediately becomes obvious. Dramatically reduced forward visibility. The engine could be mounted lower, but that trades the visibility issue for an issue with a thrust line that is very low, but more importantly results in inadequate clearance between the propeller tips and the ground. So why not just mount the inline four upside down? Even if we were to use fuel injection instead of carburetors or just turn the carburetors right side up, the one component that cannot be turned upside down is the wet sump lubrication system, which can't function correctly upside down as it makes use of gravity to collect oil into the sump at the bottom of the engine block. It is possible to instead use a dry sump lubrication system, which instead of keeping the oil in a pan at the bottom of the block, keeps it in an external oil tank, which is then pumped into the engine and back into the external tank when the engine runs. Unfortunately, this drives up engine weight, complexity, maintenance and cost. No big deal, it could still work. But there is a better solution than turning the inline 4 upside down and using a dry sump lubrication system. We keep the inline 4 right side up, mount it lower, but instead of it letting affect the thrust line and propeller tip clearance, we use a gearbox to move the propeller hub higher. That solves the problem. But like the dry sump lubrication solution, this solution too adds more weight and complexity. One problem neither of those two solutions can solve is engine cooling. By stacking four cylinders in a line, the front cylinder gets optimal cooling from airflow, but the rear cylinders get suboptimal cooling. And while the inline four air-cooled airplane engine has been done successfully back in the 1930s already, it is less than ideal. But that doesn't matter, since modern inline four car engines are water-cooled, not air-cooled, meaning adequate airflow isn't really required. Water-cooled engines, however, are heavier due to additional radiators, hoses, pumps, as well as the weight of the coolant itself. Despite all that, we still haven't touched on one major problem with the inline four. While inline four engines generally has better power to weight ratio at lower cost than the Boxer four, one problem makes it nearly impossible to make inline four engines as big in displacement as many of the Boxer four engines on light aircraft. 
and that problem is engine balance. Engine balance refers to the balance of the internal moving components of the engine and determines how much the engine vibrates when running. And as you probably know, a big killer of perfectly good engines is excess vibration. There are two types of engine balance, primary and secondary balance or imbalance. Primary imbalance is easy to understand as it is caused by the inertia of the up and downwards movement of the pistons and connecting rods. Secondary imbalance is a little more complicated as it is caused by the pistons traveling more at the top half of the cylinder than the bottom half. This is due to the connecting rods going side to side as it rotates which changes its relative vertical length. When the crank is at zero degrees rotation, the piston is at top dead center. When the crank is at 180 degrees rotation, the piston is at bottom dead center. However, when the crank is at 90 degrees rotation, the piston is not at 50% or halfway between top and bottom dead center, as you might think, and is actually lower. This causes a difference in up and down acceleration and deceleration of the pistons, which creates an upwards and downwards imbalance or secondary imbalance. I cannot possibly do the subject of engine balance justice in this video, and for an in-depth and easy to understand explanation of engine balance, check out the video linked in the description of this video. But don't worry. All you need to know for this video is that primary and secondary imbalance exists and what the consequence of it is. Both the inline 4 and Boxer 4 engines have perfect primary balance. This is due to the even number of cylinders and for every piston at top dead center there is a piston at bottom dead center and this opposite in direction inertia can thus be completely balanced out. The Boxer 4 also has perfect secondary balance with the up and downwards secondary imbalance being cancelled out by the opposing cylinders. The inline 4 however does not have good secondary balance with all pistons and cylinders facing in the same direction and thus cannot cancel out the secondary imbalance. And while there are certain aids that can reduce secondary imbalance like balance shafts, it does so at the cost of added weight, added cost, added complexity, an increase in the number of moving parts which negatively affect reliability as well as increased internal friction which reduces power output. So why is this important? It is important to know that secondary imbalance forces are much smaller than primary imbalance forces and that secondary imbalance forces increases with two factors. The first factor is engine revolutions per minute. The higher the RPM, the higher the imbalance forces. The second factor is the weight of the pistons and connecting rods. The bigger they are, the heavier they are. The heavier they are, the higher the secondary imbalance forces. This has a serious and well-known implication for inline four engines and that is a limit on engine displacement. This is the reason why inline four car engines aren't often made larger than 2.5 liters and even with balance shafts and other clever counters, very rarely do inline four engines ever exceed three liters in displacement. This means inline four engines are essentially power limited. Ignoring ultralight and light sport aircraft for now, most light aircraft engines need to be in excess of 3 liters in order to produce adequate power. Here are some engine sizes for popular small 2 and 4 seater light aircraft using Boxer 4 cylinder engines. As you can see it is impossible to make inline 4 engines that are this big. Or is it? In breaking news, this is CNN breaking news. An inline four air cooled 6.1 liter airplane engine has been designed 90 years ago. Okay, so not exactly breaking news. The engine I'm talking about is the De Havilland Gypsy Major, powering the Tiger Moth, Chipmunk, and a few dozen other less popular aircraft from the 1930s and 40s. So 
So if large displacement inline force has been done successfully back in the 1930s already and was actually pretty widely used and successful, why did I say that inline force can't be made this big? Did you just lie to me? It's actually pretty simple why car inline four engines can't be made this large, but an airplane engine could and I've already revealed the reason why when I said that there are two factors that increase the secondary imbalance forces. The first being the weight of the pistons and the conrods and the second being the engine revolutions per minute. The higher the RPM, the higher the secondary imbalance forces. As it turns out, airplane engines do not need to run high RPM. In fact, they actually prefer maximum RPM to not exceed about 2700 since that is the maximum speed at which most propellers can turn. Depending on the propeller blade's length, the propeller tips can actually break the speed of sound if they spin too fast and that dramatically reduces the propeller thrust and effectiveness as well as being extremely noisy. Even so, the 6.1 litre Gypsy Major engine is limited to 2550 RPM and for a duration of one minute only. Normally, however, it is operated at about 2100 RPM, which is fairly low compared to Boxer 4 engines like the Lycoming 0320. This low operating RPM explains why the Gypsy Major engine could be made this large without running into significant secondary imbalance issues, but why modern inline four car engines, which needs to rev much higher, can not. So how come then we didn't see more inline four engines being designed for aircraft after the 1940s? The answer has already been provided earlier in the video and that is the additional complexity required to make the inline 4 do what the Boxer 4 already does so naturally. All these additional complexities are required just to make an inline 4 work on an aircraft. So why go through all of that and not just instead use a Boxer 4 out of the box without any problems that needs to be solved. But into the 21st century and things have changed. Internal combustion engine technology has come a long way and in cars we now have turbocharged inline four engines as small as 1.5 liters able to produce 200 horsepower. This is due to better airflow, better fuel delivery like direct injection, variable valve timing, higher compression ratios, better thermal efficiencies and so on. And pilots and aircraft builders have noticed and have been converting inline four car engines for aviation use for many years now. And although there aren't any purpose designed inline four engines being manufactured for light aircraft that I'm aware of, a few companies have been professionally converting inline four car engines for experimental aircraft for quite some time. One example of a professionally converted car engine is the Viking range of aircraft engines. The Viking 195 for example is a turbocharged Honda 1.5 litre 16 valve fuel injection 195 horsepower inline 4 airplane engine. Another example is Aeromomentum's AM15T, which is also a turbocharged 1.5 liter 16 valve double overhead cam fuel injection 160 horsepower inline 4 airplane engine. Perhaps the most popular example of late is the Edge Performance Epex 300 Ti, a 1 liter turbocharged fuel injected inline four engine producing a mouth-watering 300 horsepower. It's not a converted car engine like the Viking and Air Momentum, but is a Yamaha Apex snowmobile engine converted for aviation use by Edge Performance. 
As you can see, these engines are all smaller than 2 liters, and their relatively small and lightweight pistons and conrods make them get away with secondary imbalance forces even at high RPM. And while the inline 4 still cannot efficiently compete with a Boxer 4 in displacement, it doesn't matter because it doesn't need to. It can compete on horsepower at a much smaller displacement. Previously, a gearbox was required just to be able to mount the inline 4 right side up to raise the propeller hub. But since these smaller inline 4 engines run at much higher RPM, the gearbox also functions as a propeller speed reduction unit, lowering the RPM of the propeller while allowing the engine to run at higher RPM. This results in the engine being able to spin a larger propeller. It has to be noted that these are car or snowmobile engines converted for aviation use and has not been designed from scratch as airplane engines. However, there are modern high revving, turbocharged, small displacement boxer 4 engines like the Rotax 915 which has been specifically designed for aviation. But that is unfortunately not the case for inline 4 petrol engines, which is a pity as I think it would be something pretty cool to see. I hope you found the video interesting. I certainly find it a fascinating subject, so let me know in the comments below if you think we will ever see an inline 4 petrol engine specifically designed for aviation. And if you've made it this far into the video, thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.